Thank you for joining me. This is part two of the Michael Manley interview, and I've simply called it the Jamaica College Years. Have a listen. My, my, my history in JC, much to my hurt, has always, of course, become identified with this one final event. In fact, that's not what JC means to me at all, and it is an evidence of how much I have calmed down that I have not exploded at the use of the word petulant, because petulant is a word that is used of young people who may protest things they don't agree with, and is not necessarily petulance at all. My history is very simple. I was very badly bullied when I went to JC first. It was brutal. And what I most remember about me and JC is that after a time I went into the gym and made myself strong enough to deal with it. And thereafter I set myself a task and that was to break bullying in Jamaica College, which I did. It has returned many times and other people have fought it. My father fought it before I fought it and beat it. The second thing that is very key to my life in JC was as the captain of the swimming team, which became the best of its time. And we're, I was enormously enthusiastic to make the boys train and be inspired and stuff like that. I was not the most um, successful scholar. Yeah, I wasn't bad, but I wasn't that interested in scholarship for its own sake. So I had a background of great pride in my school, of intense involvement in leadership in my school, and with a record over bullying in my school. So none of that I would associate with petulance. Anger, but not petulance. Comes a new head, and we had a very great headmaster, one of the great figures of Jamaican education, Reggie Murray, a giant, had taught my father, taught me. We got a new English headmaster, I was very nationalist. The nationalist movement had started in 38 and I was intensely nationalistic. When this guy comes to Jamaica College in 1943, I was offered the head boyship. So I couldn't have been that petulant. I chose to turn it down and I recommended that David Cole get it. And I had reasons which I won't bore you with now. <clears throat> and the first time he held a meeting in the school, he had us at lunch, the whole school, and said that, of course, we know JC has gone to the dogs and proceeded to take a school that was winning Jamaica scholarships, road scholarships, Manning, you name it, best swimming team of its time, within rifle, you name whatever you want, and which at least didn't have bullying at that moment, and just dismisses us as a school gone to the dogs. And I went to him, and if you call this petulance, that's cool by me. I went to him and said, Headmaster, I cannot accept what you have just said. I don't think the school has gone to the dogs. I think it's a very great school. But we would love to work with you to improve it. And he had me up from the day I dared to face him with calling my school a workplace school. That one thing led to another, I won't bore you again with the details, and finally they set a hand on me, he and another teacher and treated me in a manifestly unjust way. I'd already taken high school, A-levels as we now call it, and I was back for a year to run as a captain of the track team and to finish while I waited for thing. And they set a hand on me and I refused to accept it. I said, no, I will not accept what you are singling me out to do. I just won't accept it. So he offered to thrash me. And I got up and I, this is how you may call this petulance. I got up in his study and I said, you know, so you are welcome to try. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I suppose you wouldn't take it. I said, I repeat, sir, you, your move, try. And he said, very well, then I have no choice but to expel you. At which point it is true that I said, you will never live to expel me. I have such contempt for what is happening in Jamaica College now that I resign. <laughs> <laughs> that is what in fact happened. You know, not that you may say yes. well, grandiloquent yes. and childish, but... How old were you up. then? How old were you then? Just 18. Just how did that, birthday. how did that... And there was then a strike which I am accused of calling. It was totally untrue. The school did go on strike for two weeks in protest about my leaving. All of two weeks? Two weeks. And... Um, I didn't call it. In fact, if you really want to know, I was heartbroken. 
me the school was my life. I loved it. I adored JC. I put everything that I am into JC. And I remember I went up into the dormitory, and if you don't mind me admitting, I cried like a baby. I was shattered that this had happened. But I packed my bag, walked out of the dormitory, onto the balcony, and there was the entire school assembled, not called by me. They were protesting that I was being made to leave the school, and I was actually carried out and put on a trunk car with a bag. And that's how I left JC. And that was your they last were so day? bitter about what had happened that it took two weeks before they got the students to go back, and I had nothing to do with it. And you never ever went back to JC after that? N not for a long, long time. I had nothing to do with it. I never provoked it. And because I subsequently became a trade unionist, people mm -hmm. connect. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in fact, in fact, that story will explain to you, for instance, why in 1983. I was prepared to retire from politics before I would accept a, an election, which I thought was corruptly called in corrupt circumstances. And it's the same human being that told his party, you feel free to vote and take part because a lot of it's your livelihood, it's a convention view. I will not be a party to an election that I know is fraudulent and corrupt. That scenario, JC, has impacted you and I think quite negatively. Do you still carry those scars, you think? Well, I don't know if it's impacted negatively in that it was a very sad way to have your school career end. And to me, it was very interesting that you could get such manifest injustice in dealing with a person. I mean, if you ever knew everything that went on in that last two months before I left it, it was appalling. And I'm not saying that I wasn't difficult. I should have been a good little boy who said, yes, you, if you think the school's gone to the dogs, yes, sir, please, Master, Master Bakra, Master, I agree with you. No, <laughs> not, that's not me. Could some of it have been because of who your father was, you think? Some of what? Some of the antagonism from the administration against you. Well, I don't think so. I don't think so. The, I would never say that. I mean, I think that much more what you are looking at is that he had already by 1942 begun to inspire in Jamaica a sense of national pride, a sense of ourselves. And I was a part of that, and in spite of all of us, maybe we were a part of that. So that I would think that without his having anything to do with it either, that a spirit that he was helping to create in Jamaica is why those boys went on strike. They, got, they knew that however fine this headmaster was and whatever criticism to make, it couldn't be justifying to, to downgrade us as a no good okay. school and so on and so forth. We just weren't about to take that from an Englishman. We're about to finish. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> gently as that. We're or from anybody. From that. anyone. We're about to finish this segment. But what you haven't said is that you were a good athlete as well. You told me you were captain of the swim team. But you were not only captain. You did, in fact, perform on the swim team. And I, I, I don't think I was that good. Uh, I think I was a, an effective leader. I don't think I was, a, you know, I was an average swimmer. But you had an But injury? I wasn't selected to be captain because I was the best swimmer. I was selected captain because I was the one who would inspire them and discipline them and make them train and make them believe in themselves. And that's why they chose me as, ca they chose me as captain of the track team and I'd never, never run in championships in my life because I'd had a bad knee for years. What happened? What caused that knee problem? Football. Yes? Hurt it as a kid. And in those days they didn't know how to deal with it. Does it still bother you now? Eh? Does it still yeah, bother you still, now? Yeah, still a little. Arthritic and painful. <laughs> you know, I listened to the story you told about that JC incident and you being put on the tram and sent home. What really happened after you boarded the tram, Mr. Manley? Well, the main thing is I traveled down to the nearest point to Drumdare where I lived. I, it never occurred to me to ask them to help me. I didn't pick up a phone, ask them to come for me. They both had cars. I was quite happy to go down on the tram car by myself and carry the bag the whole way along. Waterloo Road past where Terra Nova now is all the way to Drumbray, which I did. I carried my bag myself. In did you carry it on I, your I head? My mother was in the studio. When I arrived at the bag, she said, Michael, what are you doing? You're coming here carrying your bag. What's happened? So it never occurred to me. That I never have asked people to help me in things. Never asked them to help me. Oh, boy. It should be very clear to you that 
Mr. Malley didn't quite appreciate my referring to him as a petulant schoolboy in the introduction. You heard how many times he brought it up? <laughs> the Jamaica College drama. What a art of clubs. Well, that should give you a peek into the young man's character and personality. What do you think Michael Malley turned down being named head boy? Whew, coming up in part three, well, going to look into his sojourn in foreign lands and he attended McGill University. All right, when you hear how long he was there, you'll understand why I say all right. Then the London School of Economics. And um, while he was in England, you know, he had at one point thought he would want to be an art historian and went off to look about that, but decided, no, it can't work. Then he came back. Oh, boy. I'm not going to tell the story. I'm going to make him tell it. But things that get hard with him, you know, when things get hard with you, what you do, how you cope. Listen to how he coped. 